When people talk about the deadliest hitmen of all time, you hear names like Julio Santana, Joseph the Animal Barboza, and Richard the Iceman Kuklinski. These men were ruthless in their prime, and there's no disputing that. But I think we seem to have forgotten about one man. One man who was more brutal than any hitman we've heard of. One man who was part of the mafia even before he was born. One man who was so cruel he tortured a 12-year-old boy for two years before killing him. That man is none other than Giovanni the People Slayer, Brushka. You're probably asking yourself how that's even possible, or what do I even mean when he said the Mafia before he was born, right? To find the answers to these questions, let's go on a trip to Sicily, Italy, and unravel the life and numerous crimes committed by Giovanni Brusca before his fall. You have no idea how dangerous this man was. So sit tight, because you're about to find out. On June 4th, 1993, a member of the Sicilian Mafia, Santino De Matteo, was captured by Italian police. In Santino's bid to get a reduced sentence, he became an informant, giving the police detailed intel on how the people slayer, Giovanni Brusca, on the order of the Mafia boss, Toto Rina killed an anti-mafia prosecutor in cold blood. Snitching on a man like Giovanni Brusca meant big trouble for Santino. He knew the mafia would come after him, but he had to do it anyway to save himself. The sad part is he had a 12-year-old son named Giuseppe De Matteo. Giuseppe was a liability for Santino. He could hide from the cartel, but there was no way his son could. Santino knew how dangerous Giovanni Brusca was, so he pleaded with the police to take his little boy Giuseppe into witness protection until the heat went down. But one thing Santino forgot was that the Mafia had informants within the police. So immediately when Giuseppe was taken into witness protection, the informant alerted Giovanni Brusca and his men on the location where the boy was kept. At that moment, all Giovanni wanted to do was strangle Santino till he took his last breath. But on second thought, he knew killing Santino wouldn't change anything and that kidnapping his son would hurt a lot more. You gotta give the man some credit. It's the mafia, you know? Cause as much as he was a killer, he's also a freaking genius. To capture little Giuseppe, he asked two mafia members to dress up as police officers and infiltrate the hideout where Giuseppe was staying. On getting there, the Mafia members convinced Giuseppe they were taking him to see his father in police custody. Giuseppe innocently followed him without knowing he was going to meet his doom. But how did Giovanni even get here? It's one thing to kill ordinary people, maybe bad people, but to kill a child. Like how dark and sinister can you be to do something like that? Well, for Giovanni, his role as a killer had been laid down for him even before he was born. Because his great-grandfather, his grandfather, and even his father, Bernardo Brusca, were part of the Corleonesi clan of the Sicilian Mafia. Giovanni's father was the head of the San Giuseppe Giotto district of the Corleonesi clan. Growing up in San Giuseppe Giotto, a small town in Palermo, Italy, Giovanni Brusco was a mere driver for Toto Rina before his father's arrest in 1985. After his father's arrest and sentenced to life imprisonment for numerous homicides, Giovanni filled in his father's shoes to become the head of the San Giuseppe Giotto district. Having so much power in the district, with so many men under him, brought out a side of Giovanni no one knew he had. Maybe he was possessed by a demon. Maybe he always had a demonic side. I don't know. But what I do know is that the things Giovanni did weren't normal. I wouldn't think any normal man could have the stomach to do such things. And I'm not talking about shooting people or snapping their necks. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about making people suffer till death. Sometimes he would shatter their bones with a hammer till they died. Other times he would use pliers to pluck out their ears, nails, and fingers till they bled to death. Then when they died, he'd chop their bodies into parts and roast them on a grill or melt them in acid to leave no traces behind. From one victim to the next, Giovanni wiped out anyone he was ordered to. And as a way to avenge his father's conviction and that of the other Mafia members, Toto Rina ordered Giovanni Brusca to kill the anti-Mafia prosecutor, Giovanni Falcone. This was one murder that put Giovanni Brusca's name at the top of the list for the most wanted hitmen in Italy. 
However, Giovanni Brusca didn't just kill this man alone. He killed his wife and his three bodyguards, all with one crazy car explosion. He planted 13 drums of TNT and Semex explosives beneath a motorway he expected Mr. Falcone to drive by. As predicted, Giovanni Falcone and his family were about to cross the marked road when Brusca detonated the explosives, killing all of them in the car instantly. He was a skilled killer, and Toto Rina spotted his potential. He became the number one hitman for the Mafia, carrying out all the high-profile killings for the bosses. First, he killed a rival boss, Vincenzo Malazzo, and his pregnant wife. Next, he had an active role in killing Ignazio Salvio, a powerful businessman and a strong connection between the Mafia and politics. Finally, in maybe one of his sickest assassinations, he killed three men who drove a specific type of vehicle as the one his target also drove. He didn't know which one exactly was the target, so he just said to himself, eh, you know what, I'll just kill them all. And he did kill them all. But again, what he did to little Giuseppe De Matteo was something way beyond normal. After capturing Santino De Matteo's son Giuseppe on November 23, 1993, Giovanni Brusca ordered his men to take him to their safe house, where they tortured the life of little Giuseppe. The police found out Giuseppe was gone and informed Santino about it. Santino was desperate to get his boy back, and in a bit of desperation, he went into the belly of the beast, San Giuseppe Giotto, to negotiate his son's release with Giovanni Brusca. Even Santino himself knew Giovanni could have killed him there and then, but he didn't. Instead, Giovanni told him the only way he was going to release his son was if he retracted his statement on the assassination of Giovanni Falcone and the other members of the Mafia. At this point, Santino's hands were tied. On one hand, he had to save his son, and on the other, retracting his statement would earn him a massive sentence behind bars. Since they couldn't reach an agreement, Giovanni continued torturing this 12-year-old boy, and after 779 days, on January 11, 1996, Giovanni finally ordered his brother, Vincenzo Ciodo, and another Mafia member, Salvatore Monticello, to strangle Giuseppe Di Matteo to death and melt his body in acid. 779 days, people. He tortured a 12-year-old boy for 779 days. If it wasn't clear to you before, it should be now that this guy was a psychopath. The crazy thing is, while he was holding Giuseppe captive, he ordered the bombing of various tourist spots in Sicily, leaving multiple people dead and a lot more injured. But as the war between the Mafia and the state continued, more members of the Mafia were captured and in turn became informants for the police. This gave the police more than enough evidence to prove Giovanni's involvement in various murders. The prosecution filed a lawsuit against Giovanni, and even though he obviously didn't show up, he was sentenced to life imprisonment in absentia for the murder of political businessman Ignazio Salvo in 1992. On hearing about his sentence, Giovanni immediately went into hiding, and just as everyone predicted, he cowardly retracted his men from the war. But less than four months later, he was eventually found in a hideout having dinner with his girlfriend, his son, and his brother's family on May 20th, 1996. I can't even fully narrate the joy the police officers felt when Brushka finally stepped into the police station. They were so happy. They even cheered his arrival. Giovanni, with his scruffy-looking beard, his dirty jeans, and stained white t-shirt, stood there in handcuffs, powerless. He knew a very, very gruesome death awaited him. But what he did next just showed he was way smarter than even the legal system itself. After confessing his involvement in the murder of over 200 people, he became an informant for the police. Can you believe it? The same guy who killed Santino's son because Santino was a rat was now a freaking rat himself? At first, the police never wanted to believe a word from him, and it also checked out that the first set of intel he gave him was false. However, over the next few months, Giovanni gave some pretty solid information on how to capture other bosses in the Mafia, along with some other intel on their dealings with Toto Rina. Finally, in 1997, Giovanni was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. Still, in 1997, he was sentenced to an additional 26 years for the killing of the anti-Mafia prosecutor Giovanni Falcone, and in 2009, he was given a second life sentence for another murder he committed. 
I don't need to spell it out for you. You can see for yourself this guy was going to rot in jail for the rest of his life. However, he didn't. In 2004, Giovanni was granted access to visit his family for one week after a 45-day interval since he was a trusted government informant. Then finally, his sentence was reduced to 26 years. And on May 31st, 2021, Giovanni Brusco was released from prison. Just imagine the families and friends of the 200 people he killed seeing him walk the streets a free man. Of course, the government received heavy backlash for his release, but it was worthless at that point. He was out and he was free. He beat the government, he beat the legal system, and he outsmarted everyone. But here's my question for you. Why haven't you liked this video already? You're here, come on man. Subscribe to the channel, hit a thumbs up, set some notifications, and keep these awesome videos coming to you. All right, now back to the real question. Do you think Giovanni Bruschka, who at the time of making this video is 65 years old, would turn back to his life of crime, or do you think he'll remain in the good books of the Italian government by avoiding crime? I want to know your opinion in the comments section down below. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'll see you around.